Hi, welcome back to Cambridge Inside Out. I'm Judy Nathans. And I'm Robert Winters. And it's still June 27, yes. 2017. Yes. All right. So we just had our city council candidate mm -hmm. Paul Toner on for the first half hour. Uh, but it's, we're just back to us uh, yes. this time here. So uh, a few things. We certainly would like to talk a little bit about what happened up at city council yesterday. It was the last meeting until the summer meeting, right? Uh, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, but I, I maybe just start off, just mention, um, since we have candidates will be pulling papers uh, for the municipal election starting next Tuesday, July 3rd, uh, due July 31st, end of the month, I thought I'd just sort of mention a couple of sort of proportional representation related things. Mm -hmm. One quick one is I may have mentioned a few weeks back uh, mm -hmm. that uh, the Cambridge Regional Latin High School was again doing ranked choice ballots in the selection of student government offices. Uh, it turns out most, many of the positions this year were, the candidates were, it wasn't a, enough competition. Uncontested. To, well, either uncontested or, or yeah. it, was, it was sort of somebody obviously won like on the first ballots. Okay. Um, so I only had to run a couple of them, but I was, you know, again, I had the, the joy of uh, um, to do that. Of doing that again. So we ran a couple of elections, so I just wanted to sort of point out that that's now two years running. We're using ranked choice uh, ballots for the, the high school. A uh, second thing, it's somewhat related to proportional representation. Actually, it is very much related. I, I got a press release yesterday from Fair Vote, which is a national organization, oh, yeah. you know, that promotes ranked choice balloting. Uh -huh. and for generally, it was a, it's for single winner elections all around the country. But they put in a they put in bill which I know has sort of been their long time goal. I don't know if it's going to go anywhere, but it's basically calling for a change in the way uh, congressmen are um, uh, elected and apportioned per state. Hmm. So, for example, if you had uh, if you had fifteen uh, uh, representatives from a state, uh, they their idea would be that you could have something like let's say three districts of five representatives each, or five districts of three representatives each, elected through ranked choice voting, voting in proportional representation. Oh, wow! Now, I don't think that's going to get a lot of political traction. No, it won't. But <laughs> so. but you know I think it's something that's sort of been at the base of yeah. uh, fair vote and they were originally called the Center for Voting and Democracy for at least mm. twenty years that I know of. So uh, anyway, I just thought it was kind of interesting. So that they they want to do that on a federal level. On a federal level, yeah. And it was, Maine is doing it on a state level or all uh, over. Yeah, on a state level, right. yeah. Um, so, um, but you know. Congressional districts are, by con uh, act of Congress, are mm -hmm. single winner districts. Uh, it doesn't have to be, and it wasn't always that way. They were multi member districts years ago. Mm. I think in, uh, might have this a little bit wrong, but I think it might have been either in Ohio or maybe it was Illinois, had cumulative voting, is what it was called. Let's not get into the details. No, really. But where, you know, you, a city would actually elect multiple congressmen for a city. All right. And so it wasn't like you just divvied up a city into two districts, you would actually elect your two. Uh, and it was done kind of like the senators in a way you have two senators per state so maybe right but it's still a single winner election you're not mm -hmm. you're never electing two senators at one time no that's true right yeah okay but uh, but it was interesting so in the day of the big press release I, I actually get email from the head of the for fair vote mm -hmm. wanting to get some background information on Cambridge mm -hmm. elections mm -hmm. specifically how how much what percentage of quota do you, should you need to get oh. and expect on the first on number one yeah. votes if you have any chance of being elected. So I was doing research going back to 1941s to send to Rob to, to do that, yeah. which is kind of interesting. Yeah. You know, we'll, we could talk about that another time, I suppose, yeah. but it is kind of interesting. You know, some, yeah. you know if, if you were, if quota turned out to be 2,000 votes to get a city council seat, mm -hmm. assuming there were 20,000 uh, people voting, I'm trying to be optimistic for this yeah. year that it would go up. Yeah. So if, you got, if it takes 2,000 to win, how many number ones should you try to get? Seems to me it's very easy to get that number of votes. Well, if it is, then we'd have a lot of counselors. Well, I don't know. It just seems to me that when I think about it, that's not many people to reach. I mean, really. No, in principle, you should be able to, if you were really a diehard and you, you yeah. were acceptable Knocking as a candidate and you really worked, blah, 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 call, yeah. you could do it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, well, it's identifying who and, and making sure yeah. they want to vote and if they're registered and all those things. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, it's probably true that you'd need at least four, if you, if, Quota was two thousand. You probably should be getting about fourteen hundred number ones right. in order to do it. Right. If the quota was much lower, right. like it's been in some years, you know, it's been as low as thirteen hundred something. Yeah. Then a person could get elected by having like right. eight or nine hundred number right. one votes. Right. Right. 
So right. anyway, it's an interesting question. Yeah. I'm sure some candidates are already thinking about it. You yep. know who you are. Yep. So anyway, so those are a few PR related things. Okay. So anyway, we're for elections. We did have a city council meeting last night. And one last week. But, yeah. uh, that's right. We, so that we was have, short. Was that shorter? No, I don't remember. Uh, yeah, it was shorter. Yeah. Um, the one last night actually we dragged on for six hours. Yeah. Well, public comment went on until about 20 of 8. At right. Least. Yeah. So, but, you know, it, and obviously the yeah. the number of items on the agenda were such that I didn't think it was going to last that no, long. No, but there were some pretty big items on there. That's really what there, happened. There were ten policy orders, weren't there? Or was that ten? But years? most of the policy orders just sort of got whisked through. Mm -hmm. It was, I mean, there was the there were contentious things. There was one charter right item from last week about yes. a proposal to inquire about the land. Uh, oh, that took a lot of time because that, that was a lot, a lot of public time. comment too. There was a lot of public public comment on it, and yeah. uh, and a lot there was of intentions, a lot of and, yeah. posturing, and oh, politics. it's also like everyone's saying, you yeah. know, and look, it's bringing out all the not in my backyard people. Well, you know, listen, I've I've been watching things long, yeah. back, from way back in the days when yeah. Al Bellucci was a city yeah. councilor and a mayor, and it was always kind of a little bit of part of the political fun to sort of have this little, you know, poking Rattle Street, you know. Like, yeah, oh, but, the but people I mean, up at Harvard. But the order right. was pretty, like, the city needs to get into negotiations now. It's like there was no, I don't know, is that normal? I mean, you I, don't no. have public meetings first to yeah, see, I mean, is this a good idea? Yeah, so or, the order would know? just basically ask for, and yeah. it, it was introduced in the meeting of the 19th, but it came back because of yeah. the charter rate last right. night. Uh, basically, since there was apparently some land transfer to some degree going on, with the, was it the uh, Divinity School? Well, it was only mentioned as the Episcopal Divinity School, but it is, as but pointed out, Leslie owns of, half of it. Well, it's sort of like a condo kind of arrangement, which I'm not quite sure what that means. But Leslie <laughs> literally owns half of that. Right. They sold it to so, Leslie. So yeah. they have a so property interest eight, eight, in it. Exactly. Yeah. And first right of refusal from what it sounded like. Right. right that, that's right. And it may be such an arrangement. Doesn't uh, mean you don't go through the process, which I think is some people are right. trying to say. It doesn't hurt to go through the process. However, people need to know all of these issues, right. which I think was important to know. But it's also it's an asset for the divinity school and uh, the What's an asset divinity for school, the, the school? property. They so, need the money. And they need the money, so it's not like you it's, know they're out of because they're a church. They, you know, they should completely be. They should just give they're moving it away to New York, and, and they charity. need to get as much they as they can. They need resources too. Yeah. Right. So anyway, it'll be interesting. I think it was yeah. it was cooler had started to prevail uh, into the conversation when people yeah. were at least starting to acknowledge that well, we're not talking about the whole site. Maybe you could get a few housing. Even units if you could just get a few, of, wouldn't that be something? You know, yeah, one right. It's not like two. people are inventing. Yeah. I think these huge buildings. Well, going I think up that's now. really what what was getting yeah. generating the outrage was yeah. the notion that you have these yeah. historic buildings get knocked down. And you right. put up a, You're just going to put you know, up a twelve story yeah. affordable right. housing right. complex right in, right in the heart of like. So Harvard yeah, I, let. So what is the that's next step? Right. Where well, we basically it gets it's sent to the manager to basically look into it. Okay. You know, and that's what will happen. And, you know, chances are not too much will come of it. But it's it's a totally appropriate. The city council should look into all possibilities. Right. Right. Leave no stone unturned. Right. You know, you never know. Maybe something good comes out of it. So right. give it a shot. But it took a long time. Right. They really went back and forth and back and forth about that. You know, that was that was um, definitely something. Yeah. You know, and they, it was, you know the recurring theme of um, uh, bicycle safety. Well, that was, was, that was, that was throughout the whole meeting because right. the public comment and then there's one of the city manager agenda there, had an item and then there was a manager, report back it was from a report a, from the city manager right. it was a city council right. order, order related to and there was a fair amount of public yeah. comment about that yes you know so it's sort of a, a yes. you know an ongoing ran the thing. gamut from get rid of all the cars one the blast public commenter to like don't be allowed to drive to i, I like craig kelly's comments at the end uh he made some reference to that this is got because I guess he brought in a late report on looking at all of the transportation issues. Yeah, and no, not yeah. to put the problem as yeah. I see it happening now yeah. is that you have like organized lobbies pushing a single-minded yeah. view of everything. Absolutely. And see, I would in my my yeah, ideal bike world, lanes or else or else, yeah. right? Yeah. You know. Meanwhile, I mean, uh, Craig Kelly had a communication yeah. in that was mm -hmm. basically saying, "Listen, in this evolving economy yeah, where a lot of people many get ways to get around and, and people to people having out. goods delivered, so you actually right. need curb access. Exactly. So if you're going to be moving, yeah, Uber, you're basically eliminating parking. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're actually in direct conflict with what the 
where the world is. It doesn't necessarily make it safer to have it. I mean, I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right. And, and, and he's a cyclist, so that's why I respect right. a lot of things he and, says. And the, yeah. it was this sort of continued misdirection, in my view, where, mm -hmm. you know, the people were quoting, in fact, there were several fatalities on bicycles. I, I felt that was out of line. I just feel like, they're, you they're, know, there's fatalities of pedestrians. There's fatalities of right. cars. The, the fatalities you know? that everybody quotes were caused by problems at intersections. Yeah. Yet, yet all of the, the infrastructure changes that people are promoting have nothing to do with, infra, uh, with intersections. Yeah. So it was, it was a tremendous yeah. amount of misdirection yeah. that was going on there, but it was certainly a time-consuming part of the city council meeting. Yeah. You know, and and it, let's face it, it's a municipal election year too, so you can definitely oh. sort of see people posturing. Yeah, I just you know, hate taking that. Position. Oh. I'm, I'm going to be mm -hmm. the champion of this, that, or whatever. You know, it was something. Um, they did pass an ordinance. Uh, which is not particularly a thrilling ordinance, but which it's uh, regulating running bamboo. Oh, was that Pat? I guess I toned out. So all the panelists on that one. to watch out. Yeah. Right? They're regulating the bamboo. I don't even know what that means. Uh -huh. Does that grow somewhere? Yeah. Uh, uh, running bamboo basically is an very invasive. So okay, that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a plant. Yeah, so if you would plant it on your property, it yeah. could easily find its way onto the neighbor's property. So they're putting in regulations saying... What is you, bad about it? Does it destroy other things? I think it's it, it's an invasive, and uh, and then it's just hard. It's like uh, I think a lot Japanese of things are invasive, so I mean, yeah. really... <laughs> I, 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 I find some people in this. <laughs> what I find bizarre is this sort of... I mean, I remember some years ago where they were going to they were gonna like uh, ban pit bulls or something. Like, I think, you know, let's, let's pass an ordinance that targets a specific species of dog, right? Yeah. Well, now they want to target a specific species of plant. Now, maybe it's a good reason. Well, that, Honestly, I say they don't know enough about it. Well, the people who are putting yeah. it together, I think they, they researched it and thought it through I mean, if, well. it, if it kills off other things that we need yeah. and want, then yeah. But I, you know, I definitely get the, getting the impression that we have a city council that is just looking for the next thing to ban, right? Well, I'm <laughs> not a big ban person. I, I'm you. not a big ban uh, Give them so, an alternative or make them pay for something else, but don't take everything away. That's right. Know. That's right. Um, now, the, the one, what I would characterize as kind of the big item of mm -hmm. uh, this part of the year, maybe the year, is the regulation of short-term short -term rentals. rentals. Oh, yeah. And that's, uh, though it in, in principle could have actually been ordained, the city council petition could have been ordained Except last night. Yeah, the well, owner adjacent thing has right, to be. Right, but there are details still yeah. to be settled, and right. there were some opinions from the law department came back, right. from inspectional services, there were a whole raft of requests. Oh, I saw that. Reports. They would need to hire yeah. a full time person just to do those inspections. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what the final version of this yeah. is going to be, but I have to say, I'm actually impressed with the city mm -hmm. council as a whole mm -hmm. in the fact that they were asking a lot of the right questions, yeah. they're relying on staff support mm -hmm. to get the right information. And they really are actually setting a bit of a standard. I mean, yeah. Uh, you know, I know Boston's working on it, but I don't know if it, I mean, Dennis Carlone cited Denver and Toronto, which I have to look up as having not allowing owner adjacent. Meaning, if you're in a two family, you you have to be in that. Uh, that that uh, I guess that's my understanding. Yeah. So it, it, I think that's actually going to become the really. That's sticky point, point when they finally yeah. come when this comes to a vote they may really maybe hash it out at the july yeah. 5th right. ordinance july committee 5th meeting where they'll take it up yeah okay. yeah um, but then ultimately it's august 7th the midsummer city council Has meeting to be where ordained, right? or refile but nobody wants to refile no, right, it. they want to they want to get this settled so then it's another six months to get yeah. everything and will back. durbin who's really was played a very very he's uh, craig kelly's aide has mm -hmm. actually played a tremendous role Mm -hmm. in drafting this and you know yeah. researching and getting it together i think today he actually was testifying up at beacon hill oh really so now the state legislature is very interested in this well, they, i know they want to tax things which is a different issue right yeah. right but the thing is is that so the whole concept of short-term rentals mm -hmm. is on their radar oh yeah right now yeah. and um so i think we're actually in a position now with whatever cambridge does if they the do it well yeah if they do it right if they don't yeah if they're not excessive, but they're right. sufficiently permissive, mm -hmm. I think that it could very well be a model that other towns will say, well, that, that seems to be pretty good legislation. Let's go with mm. it. You know, and it might even, you know, people might look at it outside of Massachusetts as well. You know, this is, it's a big issue all over the well, place, right? Right, but we're not the first ones to do it. We're not. As we said, right. I mean, Denver, right. Toronto. So I'm going to be but curious some, to look at that. But some places just yeah. outright banning, and 
you know, mm. and, and you know, so you know, maybe we can we can find yeah. a sweet spot. Yeah, and, and I, mean, other people ins- will... I mean, some people had questioned about the inspection and what that entailed. Yeah, if you looked at the list of that, it, it seems a little onerous. Yeah, actually, them. that's one of the things my understanding yeah. is that if the uh, the state regulators may want to require annual inspections, whereas the city the proposal with the city council is biannual. Just one time. Biannual. Or, well, it's either at least every two years or something like that. Um, every two years, and, they don't even inspect houses every two years. That's Our right. Agency. That's so right. Why would they inspect? Well, and I don't know what it is like for hotels, and this is sort of like a. Oh well, there place. we go. Okay, you're right. Yeah. yeah. So, so anyway, yeah, that that's a bit of a concern. You don't wouldn't necessarily yeah. want to have no. the state rules somehow mm-hmm. kind of messing with a good thing that you've this you right. carefully put together. But I think the main thing the state is just figuring out is, is what sort of um, enabling legislation which would allow cities and towns to get a little revenue off of the, the practice. Mm. Well, the state wants to get some revenue. Yeah, right. But the thing is, well, I, yeah, I guess the state would want to get some revenue. 11%, or, yeah. But they may also just, it may be like the hotel, there's a hotel tax that's but basically... They, we, we, we can get. do that now anyway. For so, a hotel. Right, but they... Right, but then we have to that. regulate it as a hotel, but, which, but okay. we're, we, we're not doing that yet. In fact, right, I see what you're saying. Yeah, pointed out, the language. a lot yeah. of the, these short term rentals are mm-hmm. technically not legal right now, and that's none the of them are legal unless they're in an area that's zoned for transient housing. Exactly. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons why just kicking the can down oh, the road boy. really yeah. isn't a reasonable option. No. Now, the, the arguably the big ticket item uh, at last night meetings was actually was not much to do about it, but was the filing of a zoning petition. From oh, by uh, hope, MIT hope. and the uh, general yeah, services. Yeah, that's right. A lot of um, people did not want to vote on that. Yeah, it was it was, and it was very interesting to see some of the materials that were made available to city council. I I I personally had to kind of rebut a few uh, uh, messages that were posted on a couple of listservs. What do you mean? Uh, like. Well, basically saying that uh, the developers. This is a practice of the developers to spring. A, uh, a petition like this in the last meeting of June mm. so that the city council is then off for two months. This way there's no opportunity for public input, ah. whatever. And that was just nonsense. It Wasn't was, the basic thing was to create a, a PUD district? Wasn't that the big issue? Right. Well, that's actually the, the crux of the actual petition. Right. But the Which, argument I was getting into was yeah. about the timing of the submission. So you feel it has not Well, I mean, in fact, I, yeah. I keep track of all zoning yeah. petitions going back to 1998. And yeah. the fact is, is the only ones that were ever filed in that manner in late June were, done, were citizen petitions, hmm. including the car loan petition, I might add. Hmm. You know, and, but developers are not, are not the ones who are dropping these bombs in, in June. But there was a you know a demand to call for the charter right to delay action on it, right? Mm. And in the end, Councillor Mazin actually exercised his charter right to delay this. Problem is, you can't. Why? Um, because it's state law it says that once a petition is filed, it has to be referred to uh, something. You the can't planning just... board. Or, okay. Uh, well, in many site cities that don't have a planning board, yeah. where the, the, the city council might be the ones who are doing, yeah. doing it, it has, would have to be referred right to the city council. Okay, but in our situation... Well, the way city council is, we've, by, we've, we've adopted a, a governmental structure where we have a planning board who manages a lot of these things. Okay. So, so our practice is to, refer to when it's referred to the city, in city council, then they, they refer to the ordinance committee of the city council mm-hmm. and the planning board as sort of a dual process Okay. We're deliberating this. And there are state specific uh, provisions in state law about you know timing and expiration dates that are based on so what happened when he was submitted. Well, remember. Council Mazin filed his, uh, he, he yeah. proclaimed his charter right, and it was eight, out to him eight city that? councilors explained to him that it okay. was a completely meaningless thing to do because oh, okay. it's going to get referred regardless. Okay, so and in fact, so that's exactly what happened. Okay. So it's technically. It was it's on semi subject to the charter right, so they mm-hmm. couldn't they you know they couldn't deliberate on it. But of course, the charter right was exercised after everybody had their say anyway. So plenty of people talked about it, and then it'll be spoken about at the midsummer meeting. So was then, it charter righted? Yes. Yeah. But it still was passed on. Because state law is right. Really so what matters. and there's it, not there's so both no, things were done. Yeah. So the thing is about a, a zoning petition is that there's no action item. Mm-hmm. All there is is a submission, and okay. the only thing you can do is refer it. So the charter right just allows it to be further discussed. They didn't take a vote on it, but it still has to get referred. 
That's right. right. Yeah, so it got so. referred. The only thing that could yeah. be done was it could be referred to the planning board and yeah. the uh, ordinance okay. committee, and it was because okay. state law requires it. So the charter right had no meaning at all. Okay. But it was it was responsive to some sort of political mm. rhetoric. Yeah. Uh, you know, so there you go. Of course, one thing that came out of this was that the person who was sort of angling to insist that it be delayed and delayed and delayed was a fellow named Elon Levy, who, oh, then, right. who then tagged his uh, message with writing 2017 city council candidates. So we're now up to 21 oh, okay. candidates. All right, there we go. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. So and, the, the and field grows. There is that, I guess, uh, MIT's. Doing this big meeting June yeah. 29th. Yeah, there's actually some, five thirty to that, with probably, food, I guess. Yeah, at the Marriott. Is and actually, Sarah Galp has actually mm -hmm. told me that there's that that going to be some good food there. So don't go there just for the they food. They did what? I did RSVP. I'm not sure I can go, but I think they go. did ask I'm for an go. RSVP. So it's Thursday, yes. five th this Thursday, right. June 29th. Right. right. At the Campbell Marriott, Marriott, Marriott second floor. Second floor. Uh, five thirty to seven thirty. Right. It's a workshop. Um, I even have a flyer around here somewhere, uh, but it's a workshop, um, you know, for the Volpe site development, retail yeah. open space, community space workshop. MIT has actually been having multiple work. Uh, right. This uh, is just a more, uh, more right. I've gone to uh, they're, one. They're group. having one with the Better Cambridge group in July as well. Mm -hmm. uh, they've had bunches and bunches of them already. Oh, they are and having they one in more. July. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Should be the, the same presentation. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. They'll meet with anybody yeah. right now, yeah. and and um, you know, and there's a lot of good ideas in this. I mean, I'm sure some people will object to the densities. Yeah. But you, everybody knew there was going to be some density associated with this. <sighs> Remember, this was the site. I where know. Councilor Chung was proposing the thousand foot tower, uh, a oh, couple, a year and a half, or wow. actually, really, is that leading up to the last election, municipal thousand election. Thousand foot tower. Yeah. So this is not the funny. The, the funny thing is, that even to think that this should be subject to the charter right. This is some. This is something that people have been talking about and getting ready for years. And to we don't. Like we have just so much business. control over it. I mean, you know, yeah. really. We should be lucky it's MIT. Yeah. So so there'll be some there'll be yeah. fourteen hundred units of housing, I think, is what's proposed, of which mm. uh, then two hundred eighty would be the affordable mm. units, right? A you know, people want them students. to do more housing for their students, is what I heard. You know, actually I think what some people want to do, if I heard it correctly yeah. last night, is they want to use this to leverage MIT to commit to building more, affordable, right. not affordable, but graduate student more, housing, which I thought not they necessarily doing, on this site. Yeah. Now they are building some that's part yeah. of the South of Main Street project, and I know uh -huh. they are very much talking about doing yeah. some on the other side of Mass Ave, right. down this end of the campus yeah. as well. But I think maybe they, some people just want to get some commitments. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you get a zoning petition, in addition to the usual sweeteners, yeah. You know, like mitigation money, right. et cetera. You say, okay, we'll, we'll okay this if you... Yeah, this yeah. is often. And MIT has signed on various, when they did the South mm -hmm. of Main Street zoning, there was a memorandum of understanding mm -hmm. where they do commit. And then that's filed in conjunction with the zoning. So um, so I think some people want to get some sort of commitments, you know. So the 1,400 units with the 280 for affordable, is that market rate units? It's not necessarily for their students or faculty or whatever. It's just housing. It's not, it's just, I don't it's think commercial it's commercial housing. You know, you got to, one thing that you always have okay. to keep in mind is when the university builds anything, mm -hmm. uh, one day it could become university housing. Right. Like the, the, um, the inn at uh, Quincy Square up at Harvard. Is that right. now university housing? Uh, yeah. Actually, yeah. you're right. It's built it's as a hotel, really... now it's university housing. And so oh, that can okay. certainly happen, huh. you know, but the point is, is you sort of have to yeah. build housing. Now you may have it. You, you, I suppose you could prescribe in the, you know, a, a sort of a, a commitment that this that certain well, correction will never be converted. But, but wait a minute. To, but making it, asking for a PUD, doesn't that give it a right to change things or have a certain amount of time to make it? I think, that uh, what it means to have a basically every for every portion of the Kendall Square area. Mm -hmm is a planned unit development. Oh, it is. Right. Okay. So now the Volpe site wasn't because it was federal property. Right. So now that will become so PUD sort of 7. The, so in other words, right. it, it's automatic. That often happens with these kind of things that take a long time to get built. Planned unit developments okay. are something I think a lot of people prefer. I think the, the MIT would prefer it. Mm -hmm. um, I think the planning board and the uh, community development probably, probably would pre prefer it as well. Why? Because it gives because them more leeway? You, you have all... It's, there's a lot more room to negotiate better, I best see. outcomes. Okay. If you just sort of say, 
this is the height, this is the density, and that's, that's it. it. Okay. And you say that, and you've All got right. no flexibility. I see. You can't, you can't, you know. Now, personally, I mean, some people would love to have a, a big swath of open space through I it. I know. I actually think the ideal... I, I thought it was fine the way it was. Right now, it's a, there's a big parking lot, isn't there? Oh, yeah, it's is dreadful now. Space? But there's, there's, I think, four schemes that were laid out. I mean, the zoning yeah, is I just... So mm -hmm. the schemes don't really mean much, but right. they're just you know, ways of thinking about things. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of like the idea that you know, as you come out of the subway, you yeah. could sort of enter and there would be sort of open space yeah. that kind of rambles diagonally through the site. Yeah. As opposed to you have to go up a block yeah. and a half to enter the open space. Right. I want it to be more accessible. I don't want to see a big open space at the corner of Kendall Square because I don't think that's best. I think I want street edges, but I also want an open space entry in there. So it's but, 14 acres, and how many acres are for the transportation? I think it's maybe? probably closer. Four. They'll be about four, so it's about right. a net 10. Okay. It'll be developable for housing, lab, okay. And the foundry building, what's the acreage on that? Is there, is it? Oh, I forget, honestly, because I mean, it's really the building. It's basically one building. It's just one building. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. So anyway, so that's it coming up. All um, right, did you want to mention the other? Um, I mentioned one thing. Actually, yeah. we're doing the Central Square Advisory Committee that I'm on. We're meeting tomorrow night. You know, we don't. We haven't met in a while. We have a new uh, Wendell Joseph is the person from CD. Is new staff person. Really looking forward to that. So well, who's the new on. staff person? Wendell Joseph is his name. For who? For the Community Development Department. Is who oh, staffs okay. the Central. Oh, Square the Party Central Party. Square Party. Central Flea last Sunday yeah. was wait, 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 fabulous. Wait. We'll do it real fast here. All right. And it's going to continue. Okay, and because I didn't get to go to that. this Friday, June 30th, yes. is the big city dance no, party in front of City here. Hall. So we don't need a picture. Okay. People know what it is, right? Friday night, we, 7 o'clock. I think it's the 20th anniversary of it. Is it? So it's a big thing. Uh, and, and give credit, yes, 20th I mean, annual dance party. I think it was originally Kathy Bourne's idea. So Yay, Kathy. Props to Kathy. Okay. So see you next All week. Right. No, no, two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks.